Hello, Salesforce Chef here. How are you? This is a video prepared specifically for Salesforce recruiters and Salesforce hiring managers. I'd like to share with you three ideas, three suggestions for filtering, for identifying fake Salesforce candidates. By fake, I mean people who just learned Salesforce and are, and are trying to land senior Salesforce jobs. Recently, I found out there are a lot of Salesforce programs where they just teach students how to pass Salesforce interviews. They don't actually teach the students what is Salesforce, how does Salesforce work, what are the best practices, how do you write Apex classes, how do you write test classes, how do you create tables and Lightning Web components, etc. Yeah, these programs, they just teach students how to pass interviews in a way that they come off as senior Salesforce developers. And over my seven years, as a Salesforce developer, I've interviewed over 200 candidates and I have personally trained over 150 people in the quest to become a Salesforce developer. So I would like to share with you three ways I would test a candidate if they're a real Salesforce developer. All right. Fake Salesforce developers are a big problem because once you hire them, it's hard to, hard to fire them. Once they're in the system, your projects are more likely to uh, suffer. All right, they will be underperforming. You have to spend extra time training them. You have to be hand-holding them, etc. Okay, there'll be a drag on the system. So we all try to find the good candidates. We have to find the candidates who will just run off. Okay, you can support them a little bit, but most of the time, most of the work they can do on their own by themselves. Okay, that's why we need to find who are the big Salesforce candidates so that you just hire the good ones. And so here are my three suggestions for finding the fake Salesforce candidates. Okay, the first one, the easiest way to find the Salesforce fake Salesforce candidates is by giving a live coding exercise. Give them two kinds of exercises. One is Apex, the other, the other one is LWC. It can be something, an Apex exercise can be something like write a trigger that will populate the number of contacts that an account has. Okay, so every time I, can, I create a contact, I would like to see the number of contacts that an account has be populated in the description field of the account. Many of the fake candidates don't really know how to write code. They just know how to talk about it. They, they can, because that's what they've been doing in their program is just how to pass interviews. Okay, so okay, they can talk about the best practice. They can tell you what is a batch class, why you write batch classes, what is a feature method, what is a cubal class, uh, but they cannot really write code. Okay, so give them a live coding exercise, boom, you will hit them on the head. Okay, I've seen candidates disappear or they've seen them fail. I've really seen candidates disappear. So they lose Zoom connection. I waited for five minutes, 10 minutes, they don't come back. Okay, it scares them off. So a live coding challenge is a very good way to just filter. Okay, that's the first way, the easiest way, and it catches most of the fake candidates. If the person passes a live coding challenge, chances are they're very, very good candidates. So now we just do two things to make sure that they're very, very good, just to verify it. The first one is check their LinkedIn profile. Do, they, do you have common connections with them? If you have second level, third level common connection with them, that's a very good sign. If you see them posting Salesforce related content lately, that's also a really good sign. That means that they are passionate about Salesforce. That means that they are engaging with the community. If, if they write about a recently recent Salesforce conference, like New York World 2 that they attended, or if they write a post about a trailblazer community group meeting that they attended and some things they learned, or they write about the latest uh, Salesforce release and some nice features that they found, that's a really good sign. That's encouraging. That means they, they are part of the community that they're learning. And once they're part of your team, they'll also be learning and contributing with new ideas and new technology that are coming out. So, but if they don't have a LinkedIn profile, like if you cannot find them on LinkedIn, that's a red flag. Okay. But if you can find them, but they don't have any Salesforce related content, if they don't have any of their experience listed, that's red slash yellow flag. That would mean that it would be good to investigate talk to them more. All right, let's say their LinkedIn profile checked out. They look good. They've been they've been engaging the community. Next thing I would do is I would just check their Salesforce certificates. How long ago did they get their first Salesforce certificate? If they're coming off as senior Salesforce developer and they got their admin certificate just two, three months ago, that would be suspect, okay? But if they got their admin certificate, say eight months or 12 months ago, that's okay. All right, people can learn really, really fast especially if they come from a different coding background. But if they got their admin certificate just three months ago, then the PD1 one month later, then PD2 another month later, and in period of two, three months, they got five, six certificates. That's pretty suspect, okay? But if they just have the admin certificate and the PD1 certificate, then that's okay, okay? Because in general, these are 
pretty, pretty simple entry-level certificates. It only becomes suspect once you have the basic ones and the architect will once happening at the same time in a very short period of time. All right, but let's say they got their certificates a while ago, it checks out, that's good. That means that the candidate can do live coding, that their LinkedIn profile confirms that they're actually part of the community, they can, that they're engaging, that they're active, and third, that their certificates have been, it has been a while since they got a certificate, okay? So if these three things you check out, that means a good candidate, let's, let's hire them, let's work with them. All right, thank you so much for your attention. I hope you all found this video useful. Please share it, hit the like button, leave a comment if you have other ideas on how you would identify good Salesforce candidates versus big Salesforce candidates. All right, I would love to hear from you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.